Hi everyone, my name is Adrian Hilbers, and today I'll give a very quick introduction to open energy system modeling for climate scientists and others. So it's always going to be a little bit difficult to give a very broad introduction like this uh, in such a short presentation. Uh, but the first point I'd like to make is that energy system models, there's a huge variety of them, and they come in many different forms. And you can classify them on a number of axes, and that's what I've tried to do here. So first is obviously the scope. You can have electricity-only models, which are sometimes called power system models. And those are things used by, let's say, grid operators, for instance. Um, on the other hand, you can also consider a huge variety of uh, energy uh, sources and end users. So you consider electricity, transport, agriculture, industry. And these are things like CO2 policy models. So these are all considered energy system models. We can also uh, have a range of spatial temporal resolution and physical realism. So we can have uh, you know, long-term scenario. Our planning models might use one country per node, uh, one day per time slice, whereas models that you know, model a grid phenomena like alternating current or you know, voltage stability might have very uh, high resolution and very high spatial uh, temporal realism, or spatial temporal resolution and physical realism. There's also quite a big difference uh, in the different mathematical structures uh, of energy system models. So I've, I've listed three here. Uh, one is simulation, where we define rules for how an energy system works and we simulate how it, how it behaves in different scenarios. Another one, another big one is optimization, where we're actually looking for the optimal decision or optimal strategy given some, uh, given some data. Uh, and, a, and a third one is agent-based, where there are different actors that can behave independently and we're trying to understand how the system uh, will behave under those actors. Uh, there's also the, how models deal with uncertainty. So models can be deterministic, not deal and not really consider uncertainty. It can have scenarios, or it can be fully probabilistic, where we do something like stochastic programming or uh, prediction intervals. Uh, and I think an interesting axis that, that's come up and is very relevant to open mod is how open a model is. So I've put openness uh, between quotes here. We can have models, anything that's private, you know, used by a single institution or commercial, so you have to pay to use it. It can be maintained and used by a consortium of agencies. It can be open source in isolation. Uh, but a lot of these models, especially the ones on open model, are open license, so anyone can use it. But also they rely on a community for development. Uh, and that's what we're seeing actually more and more here. So there's been a trend in recent years uh, for more and more open energy system modeling and uh, open mod is obviously uh, one of the communities that um, is built around that. And there's so many open energy system models and open energy databases. Uh, so it's difficult for me just to compile a list of all the, the different resources, but these are three resources that I think, if you're new to the area, are really good to know about. The first is the open mod website, uh, which has a wiki, has a list of models, has uh, an, a mailing list as well. So probably you might already know about this because this event is organized by OpenMod, um, but definitely worth checking out. And two things that you might not be familiar with is that there actually are Wikipedia pages for both open energy system models and open energy system databases. And these Wikipedia pages are maintained um, in part by the OpenMod staff. So I think Robbie Morrison uh, does a lot of this work. Um, but I'd like to stress that if you're looking for an open energy system model or a database, check out these Wikipedia pages uh, because they uh, do include a lot of the resources. And also, if you've got one of these resources, if you've got a model or a database, uh, do put it on these Wikipedia pages because that helps uh, people find them. And from here, I'd like to move on quickly to, well, this is supposed to be a talk for climate scientists. So how does climate data enter energy system models? And the way that this usually works, at least from my experience, is as follows. You take, some, you take some weather or climate data, you pre-process that into energy data, and then you put that into an energy system model. And I'll show you uh, how this works uh, in a second as well. But let's give two examples. So if I have wind power, I might take wind speeds, translate that to power outputs, essentially capacity factors through a power curve, uh, and then take these capacity factors, which are the power output as a percentage of what's possible, uh, as a time series, and put them into the into an energy system model at wind farm locations. Similarly, hydropower, I might take precipitation data, uh, use a river basin topology, and then put it into uh, an energy system model as river flows. Uh, so this is usually how 
so how climate data enters energy system models is time series. And I'll give a quick tutorial into how that works uh, right here as well. All right, so this is actually a tutorial on open energy system modeling uh, for climate scientists uh, and others as well. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you uh, a very simple tutorial of, of a very simple energy system model in action and where climate and weather data actually goes into it and actually release it for you guys. So if you're a climate scientist with not too much experience in energy system modeling, you want to get a, a simple feel for uh, one type of energy system model and exactly where climate data goes into it, uh, this might be for you. So this is actually on the open mod page and this is the list of talks. I put a link to a GitHub page, which I'll open right now. It's called the repos a Hilbert slash renewable test PSMs. And I've created a tutorial of a very simple energy system model uh, that uh, is designed to be very easy to use for climate scientists. So it's designed as an educational, if you're a climate scientist and you want to see how a simple energy system model works, uh, check it out. So what you see here is you, you have, we have the tutorial that IPython notebook here. That's what I've opened here. I'm going to run through it, uh, and hopefully this will give you a little bit of a feel for how at least one class of energy system model uh, works and how it uses climate data. So I'm going to run through this. Um, so I'm going to import the models. And what this is, is I'm going to have a, a very simple model with just one region and four generation technologies. It's got base load, which is like nuclear. It has peaking, which is like gas. It has wind, and it has solar. And I said that uh, climate data and weather data usually goes into energy system models as time series. So it's also giving you a time series. Uh, and we're going to see how what the effect of, of this time series is on, on an energy system model. So it has three columns, demand, wind, and solar. Now these are capacity factors. So wind uh, is between 0 and 1, and so is solar. Uh, let's, let's see how this works. So first we're going to have a model that's in operate mode. What I mean by operate is that we specify the generation capacities and it optimizes how electricity is generated to meet demand. Uh, but it doesn't optimize it, but we have to define the, the generation capacities. So that's what we do here. We specify the base load, peaking, wind, and solar capacity in gigawatts. And then we create a model that has those capacities. So you can change these uh, if you'd like as well. Uh, so we just call models.1region model. We put in the time series data here. We put the run mode to operate, and we specify the fixed uh, generation capacities. So that's what we're doing here. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the model, model.run. And let's see what model.get summary outputs. This shows uh, some summary outputs uh, from this model. So, so what it's done is it's optimized the generation levels with fixed capacities. And that's what we see here. We have we sp specified the base load, peaking, wind, and solar capacities. That's what we see here. They've been specified to the numbers that we numbers that we picked, but it's optimized the generation levels. This is the uh, total generation levels from these different sources, as well as the total demand, the total cost, and emissions. Note these are uh, actually annualized. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and see if we can understand this a little bit better. So uh, this is inherited from, um, from the, the modeling framework, but you have this nice thing model.plot.time series. So this hopefully gives a little bit of a feel for what this model is actually doing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and close this. I'm going to make them reappear one by one. So this black line here, this shows the demand. And this is what we have to meet uh, with different generation sources. Uh, so first, uh, I'll make them reappear one by one. This is the amount of generation that comes from solar. This kind of has the shape you expect, right? Uh, we have it during the day, but uh, almost not at night. Wind as well. So this is the generation that comes from wind. Then we put on base load. So base load is a little bit like nuclear. It's, it's pretty much always running. Uh, and uh, we use it, well, we want to keep it running all the time, and that provides base load power. And we have peaking as well, and this kind of matches the, uh, meets the last uh, amount, of, amount of demand. And we've got a little bit of this white uh, parts. That's where actually the, uh, the total generation doesn't meet demand. So these white parts have, we have some unmet demand. And that's because we didn't give it quite enough generation capacities up here. Uh, so we have some unmet demand. So really what we should do is we should get some storage as well so that we can take these this period where uh, we've got excess power and use it to fill uh, fill the power over there. Um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a feel for, and you can see where the, where the wind and solar time series and demand time series appear in here and how they affect the operation of this model. Uh, now we can also run this model in planning mode. And the only difference with that is that instead of specifying the generation capacities, uh, we let the model optimize it. 
So we find that the cheapest way of meeting demand with different generation technologies by allowing the model to optimize how much of each technology it wants to build. So we, we do this the same way. We, ha we call the model the same way, but the same time series data, but instead of operate, we put plan here, and we don't specify the uh, generation capacities now. I'm going to go ahead and run this model again, and it's looking to get summary outputs. So here we see the capacities aren't what they were before, right? And actually the model doesn't put any baseload capacity. Bit of peaking, bit of wind, and bit of solar. And these are the generation levels and the costs as well. So let's make the same plots that um, we, uh, we had before. Uh, so here we actually see, well, as you saw, there's no baseload at all. And actually we've got a lot of wind power, a lot of solar power, and the rest is met by peaking. And I've cheated a little bit because I've, I've chosen a, w a week. The time series that I've chosen is a week that has very high solar output and also very high wind output. Uh, so actually this is a very, very good week for renewables and that's kind of what we're seeing in the model. If we had uh, solar and wind patterns like this always, then we would have a much easier power system to run than we do in the UK now. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a feel for at least two types of energy system models and how climate data is used in them and how uh, these models work. So have a tinker around with this yourself. Uh, it's in, the, on, in this GitHub repo. Uh, so you can tinker around it yourself and hopefully you'll learn something from it.